call a uh, regular scheduled Classic City Commission meeting to order. It's August 11, 2020. Um, this conference will now be recorded. Obviously, we're virtual again. So, um, go ahead and call to order, and Mayor Pro Tem is going to do the invocation, and Commissioner Padilla is going to do the pledges this evening. Will you bear with me? We are thankful for this day that has been given us for its blessings, its opportunities, its challenges. May we appreciate and use each day that comes to us. We pray for strength and guidance for each day as it comes, for each day's duties, for each day's problems. May we be challenged to give our best always, and may we be assured of your divine presence with us. Keep us well and safe. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, and to the Republic. which stands which is one nation, one nation indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico and the ZS symbol of perfect friendship among United Cultures. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioners. Um, Carla, would you please? Mayor Snowberg? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Fry? Here. Here. Commissioner Padilla? Here. Commissioner Randall? Here. Commissioner Lewis? Here. All present? All right, thank you. Uh, next is agenda approval. If there are any items that do not meet, you're being heard on this evening's agenda. Now it's time for both those items. They're done. Um, I would motion to approve tonight's agenda as given. Mayor, I move to approve this evening's agenda as given. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post name son. <laughs> Next is consent agenda. Items placed on the consent agenda will be voted on with one motion. If any item does not meet the approval of all commissioners, a commissioner may request that the item be heard under items from items consent agenda. Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to accept tonight's consent agenda as given. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to accept tonight's consent agenda as, give, agenda as given. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post on. Uh, Carla, do we have any citizens input? We did not. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are no business items. So now we are going to our judicial hearing or land use, a conditional <coughs> 2020-02 to allow a construction yard for a construction project in an 01 zoning district. Um, let's see, I have the that three-page script down here, so please bear with me. And then I'll, after that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Saavedra. Okay. So this is, you read at the beginning of all land use hearings. The following hearing procedure is for all hearings on tonight's agenda. A land use hearing registration on the clerk's table. For those who wish to receive a copy of the results from this hearing, you must provide your full name and current mailing address in order to receive a copy of the land use hearing order. If you wish to testify and provide comment on the matter issue, you must register with the clerk on the land use hearing registration form and be sworn in with staff, the applicant, identified parties, witnesses, and interested persons. The meeting tonight be conducted under procedures mandated by the New Mexico Court of Appeals and Battershell versus Albuquerque, which are intended to, pro I'm sorry, to protect the due process rights of all parties. Under this ruling, the following procedures will apply. Parties to the meetings will, to the meeting will be identified, as well any witnesses the parties may wish to give testimony, as well as any interested persons wishing to testify and provide comment. City staff has a responsibility to assist the commission in fully developing the meeting record and may testify. All persons offering testimony will be sworn in by the clerk, mayor, or city attorney who are authorized to enter oaths, administer oaths. All persons offering testimony will be subject to cross-examination by commission, city staff, and the parties to the hearing. Testimony will be limited to the relevant member being heard. 
Procedure. The item to be decided at tonight's public hearing is an application for a conditional use permit or CUP for a construction yard in an 01 zoning district for property located at 500 East Chaco Street. Testimony will be limited by the mayor. Identification of parties for the purpose of this meeting applicant defined so that persons may be designated by the commission as parties if they can show to the satisfaction of the commission that they have an immediate pecuniary or direct interest in the outcome of the meeting. Witnesses are those persons designated by parties to present testimony on their behalf. Interested persons are those persons in the case but not identified as either a party by commission or by any party. Aside from these applicants and city staff, are there any persons who wish to be identified as a party to these items? Um, please state your name, address, items you wish to be a party to, and your immediate pecuniary direct interest in the outcome of this meeting. Hearing registration form provided by the clerk. We will get to that part in a second. Um, please review the land use hearing forms provided. Um, and then we will move into the land use hearing part of the meeting. Is there a challenge to the jurisdiction of the city of as city of Aztec commissioners to hear any of the hearings on tonight's agenda? Uh, and I'm sorry, I've got my thing pulled up. I can't really check with anybody here. So I need verbal, I need verbal uh, confirmation. Uh, no. Been, no, okay. <laughs> Uh, nope. Have there been ex parte contacts regarding the upcoming matters that the commission member needs to declare? No. No. Will staff parties identify the commission on witnesses? Any interested persons wishing to testify regarding for those testifying, please stand and raise your right hand. <laughs> a little bit. Sorry about that. I'm trying to like multitask here on my screen. He's not standing. <laughs> okay. Um, do you swear or tell the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. Finish on here. Grant, can you hear me? I, I barely hear you, Mayor Mayor, uh, Mayor Snover. Okay, um, I'm I'm basically Mike. I'm swearing you in. You have I'm gonna have I guess we're gonna have to go on the honor system because I don't see a camera here for you. So I'm gonna read the the oath to you. Please stand and raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. All right. All those testifying, I did that testimony evidence must be directed toward the applicable federal or state and municipal laws and regulations or criteria which the person testifying believes to apply to the decision. Failure to raise an issue with sufficient specificity to afford us and other interested persons an opportunity to respond to the issue preclude appeal on that issue. Any party as identified by the commission may request of this hearing if able to provide documentation or evidence in support or opposition of the application in addition to available at the time that notice of this hearing was provided. And the conduct of land use hearings unless there is a continuance if a participant so requests before the conclusion of the initial evidentiary hearing the record shall remain open for at least seven days after the hearing. The order of presentations will be staff. We'll summarize the staff report to the extent necessary to enable those present to understand the issues before the commissioners. The commission may ask members of staff cross-examination by applicant and parties. Second, the applicant to include their witnesses have up to 15 minutes. The commission members may ask questions of the applicant, cross-examination by staff and parties. Witnesses may be cross-examined but do not have the authority to cross-examine Parties to include their up to 10 minutes for each party. Members may ask questions questions of party. Cross-examination by staff and applicant. Witnesses may be cross-examined but do not have the authority to cross-examine. 
And fourth, interested persons have up to five minutes each. The commission members may ask questions of interested persons, cross-examination by staff, applicant and parties. Interested persons may, cross, may be cross-examined, but do not have the authority to cross-examine. The hearing will then be closed to all testimony. The commission may discuss the issue amongst themselves and then we'll make a decision and issue findings of fact and conclusions of law, move into closed session pursuant to New Mexico statute 10.15.1 H-1, the Open Meetings Act exception, continue the public hearing until a specified time or take the matter under advisement and announce a recommendation at a specified time. Okay, so I think we are ready to open this hearing to testimony. And I'm going to allow uh, Mr. Saavedra to start us off as our staff representative. Thank you. All right, good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Commission. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir, I can. Okay, great. And can everybody see the slideshow open? Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So CUP conditional use permit 20-02 is a request from Aztec Municipal School District to allow a construction yard with the 01 office and institutional school district. So as mentioned, the applicant is Aztec Municipal School District, uh, represented by Grant Banish. The location is 500 East Chaco, uh, which is the former, or which was the former courthouse. Uh, is currently a vacant lot, and the request is approval of the conditional use permit. As shown on the zoning map, the subject property is zoned 01, office and institutional, and below is the permitted uses per the 01 district. So why we are here today is primarily based on city code. You're in the 01 district and you're going to have a construction yard. A conditional use permit has to be reviewed by the Community Development Department and approved by City Commission. So that's why we are here today. So this is currently what exists today on the vacant piece of property is a construction yard. And this is another picture. So to give some context on why we're doing what we're doing, um, not only is it because it's city code, but primarily um, the intent of an 01 district is, is very, um, well, let me back up. The 01 district allows for residential uses and office and institutional uses, and the school is an institution. Now, because it's often associated with residential, this is why the stipulation of a conditional use was put into place back in 2007 when the code was ratified. Primarily because construction can be a little messy. Uh, there's a lot of negative externalities associated with it. Um, dust, smells, um, things of that nature, loud noise. Now granted, all construction uh, or all development is going to need some type of construction um, at some point. And the reason why you're seeing this construction is because Aztec um, schools are improving on some of their security improvements um, that they put forward. And so this is uh, what they submitted um, a few months ago in terms of the scope of their project. Um, unfortunately, what was not shown on that plan was the construction yard at the time of approval, and it's primarily based on where this yard that are approximately. So um, just to, just to reiterate, um, why are we doing what we're doing? It's, of course, it's you know within city code. But the intent of the code is to try to protect the residents um, should there happen to be a construction yard, and that's why there is a limitation placed on it. Um, in, up until today, we have not received any formal questions, concerns, or complaints or those supporting or requesting that the use be denied. However, we did receive a letter from an affected party um, that was shared today with the city commission and the um, applicant as well. And so, you know, I just want to reiterate, um, you know, a lot of times we, we're, 
you know, it's private property. Why, why can't I do what I, I, I want on my property? And that's a fair point. Um, but what this code tried to do was, granted, you're doing whatever you're trying to do with your property, but your property, your uses can have a negative effect on other properties. And so that's, I believe, why the intent of the code was put forward. And that's what the schools are trying to accomplish with this request is approval for the CDP. Um, and staff is recommending approval um, with some conditions noted. Again, these are um, recommendations from city staff. You're welcome to um, use all of them or none of them or add additional ones as you see fit. And with that, I will stand for questions. Any commissioners have any questions, Mr. Spadra? Seems pretty, I mean, seems pretty straightforward and I appreciate the the uh, staff report and the explanation. From what I understand, it's, it's for the, the building of the fence and the guard shack and to, to kind of add, to secure the campus, you know, uh, to, to get right down to, to, the, to the meat of it here. And uh, so, I think just, you know, it'd be however long they knock that out. And it was a grant, from what I understand, and Mr. Banish can fill us in from from after the school shooting to to allow our campus to be more secure, have some more uh, kind of choke points for entry and exit of the school, of the campus. So um, is it, that's all I have to add on that or, or to kind of give a little bit of background. Um, and it's taken this long to get the and stuff and all the bids and stuff in place to be able to do it unfortunately but you know i they're doing the best they can to move it as quickly as possible so does anybody have any does anybody else have anything to add to mr Bader's, um testimony i have a question man yes sir one of the stipulations was to handle dust control what it, how are they planning on doing that I, it's a dirt lot and they're moving dirt so how are you going to do dust control so, uh, Mayor Snover, Commission, um, under under that stipulation, they have a water truck that's going to be handling dust control when they're when that becomes an issue moving from that area to the to the high school with equipment. Um, it was brought up before with dust control as well, and the contractor who FCI and, and Brian Cornford is on the. On this call as well, who's the project manager for this project, uh, has addressed that dust control issue as well. That works. That answers the question. As long as you got water to hold it down. <clears throat> Looking at that lot, it's solid dirt, and moving back and forth, and knowing equipment, you're going to have dust. So, that I'm happy with that answer. Thank you, Mr. Banish. Um, I think in that picture. I'm sorry, uh, Mayor Snover. Uh, in that picture that you're looking at right now, you'll be able to see that water. Uh, yeah, you can see the tanker, tanker right there as well up there. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, it's not, I don't think it's going to have to be a continuous thing, but I just, I personally think if, you know, the residents there will appreciate um, the effort to try and keep it mitigated as best as possible. And I don't think, and, and based on, responses we've gotten and someone can correct me if I'm mistaken um, but as long as I think the one resident that has mentioned anything is in full favor of this and as long as um, you know they follow those things which I think they already are you know they're not working late into the night and just to kind of keep the, the dust tamped down a little bit I you know I, I think uh, especially once folks know what this is for uh, I can't imagine or or see any any issues so um, so I guess if nobody has any other questions for Mr. Savager, we'll go ahead and formally move into Mr. Banish's part of the testimony as the applicant. So seeing no other hands raised or anything, I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. Banish to uh, kind of add his part to this, his part of the testimony. Thanks for, for being here, Mr. Banish. Um, Mayor Snover and rest of the city commission, uh, thanks for having us and thanks for listening to uh, this conti continue or uh, conditional use permit. Um, you know, we're looking at wrapping this project up by 
the end of January. Um, there's a need to be able to store materials, to have a landing area for these materials. Um, FCI has been extremely um, compliant to to regulations or, or to suggestions and recommendations, um, and, and they continue to do so. Very easy to work with. Um, we have been, you know, there were some concerns with a with a neighbor um, about <clears throat> noise starting up and and during conversations with this, and that wasn't even with this project. Uh, it was agreed upon that we'll there won't be any loud work done before 7 a.m. in the morning, um, and then anything later than six will not take place additionally you know after further input from um, another neighbor today um, she listed us concerns I, I believe we're following all of those uh, she had a stipulation about a concern about having uh, work done on a weekend we we were scheduled to have uh, a tree removed um, but however, because of that, the level of noise, we got that rescheduled to happen during the week. So that won't happen on a weekend. Uh, unfortunately, because of uh, we have food deliveries that we, we put out to children um, every day. We have to have our parking lots open and available. So we're going to have some um, patching of asphalt done, uh, completed this, this Saturday. But that's that's abnormal um, for this project. It generally, it's not working on Saturdays to complete it because um, we're we're all still waiting on some some finalization of uh, projects and details um, to complete this project. And also, obviously, we're waiting for the ditch to uh, <clears throat> the water be removed out of the ditch before we're putting in a new bridge. So, if you're not sure about the scope of work on this project, we're we are, just like Mayor Snover said, um, reducing that to that choke point of the of the high school and turning it into a uh, secured vestibule exterior so that everybody visiting is going to have to go through one area. So this is a, a need to be able, a definite need to get this uh, project underway and completed in a timely manner. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> I'll start. Mr. Saavedra, do you have any questions of Mr. Mann? Yes. yes. Um, Grant, uh, could you uh, give me give us a little bit more information in regards to the patchwork? Um, you said it's going to take place on Saturday. Um, when will that commence on Saturday? And is it just patchwork or is it resurfacing? And, and the reason I, I want to just make sure that we're clear is because if it is resurfacing of asphalt, you're going to have that smell, and that's where I can anticipate some issues with uh, neighboring properties. So, um, and, and Mr. and maybe Mr. Cornford can can verify a start time on that. It is just patching. We have to uh, transfer conduit for um, security gates that are going to be installed on the north side of campus, uh, where the faculty parking lot exits onto Blanco Street. Um, there's there's some asphalt patching that will take place to uh, fill in a 12 inch wide um, asphalt cut and then there'll be an additional um, asphalt patching that again on the south side going from our eight nine hundred two-story building um, to the um, south gates that are located on Zia Street again for uh, patching where electrical and data conduits have been laid um, in those trenches and that's that's the extent of the patchwork that's going to be completed okay mr. Banish at when will the construction commence um, this is Brian Cornford I'm with FCI constructors Stephen and um, it is going to commence approximately at 8 to 8 30 a.m. on Saturday. That would be a four hour duration approximately. And like Mr. Banish said, it's just patching a trench approximately 12 to 16 inches wide um, up through the parking lot areas. No resurfacing or anything like that smell. Thank you. Um, one, one last thing. Um, 
um, and not necessarily for, for grant, um, but more for the commission, just to, to be clear, city code states that the construction project or the yard should be no more than a year. Um, based on the time frame that grant put forward, that's longer than a year. So I just want to make sure if the approval comes forward that there's a, a additional months. Uh, so let's just say a year and four months for, 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 for the, the duration of the construction yard. Um, second, I just want to be clear. I know we did receive a, a former letter um, outlining some stipulations. And I just want to, like I had mentioned, staff had recommendations per our conditions. I just want to uh, just be clear if, if uh, City Commission feels that that letter is appropriate, uh, maybe outside of Saturday, should that uh, be included? So uh, just so that we're clear um, and, you know, just so you know, I, I don't live too very far from here, so I'm pretty sure I'll hear um, some neighbors at some point. Um, and so I just want to make sure that we're communicating uh, what um, happened, either yay, nay, or somewhere in between. Thank you. Um, sir, uh, Mayor Snover, can I add a, a clarifying comment is that this project is not going to be going over a year. Um, the project's going to be finished um, it's scheduled to be finished January 2021. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, yeah, I thought that so, was what you did. I just want to, I'm glad you clarified that. So, is there, so I just want to, it looks like the commission, I think everybody's clear on that. Mr. Saavedra, are you good on that? It, it, it is, in fact, only going to be until around the turn of the, of the new year. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. I was just worried that if it goes further, then we don't want to okay. be visiting this. Right. See you. All right. So I think we're on the same page now. Um, Mr. Spanish, do you have anything else you'd like to add before I open it up to anybody that may want to ask you any other questions? Um, no, sir. That's, um, I think that's all I have to add right now. Okay. Thank you. Stand um, for any questions. Yeah. Thanks. Is there anybody that would like to on the commission that well I'll go, well mr savage already asked a couple of questions is there anybody else on staff that has any questions for mr banish regarding this this project seeing none um any commissioners would any commissioners like to ask mr banish any questions that have been covered yet or any issues that they've thought of I, I, I have a question, Mayor. Uh, uh, they mentioned the uh, project that they've got to do on Saturday. Can they commit to no other Saturdays since we have uh, a resident of the area asking for weekday work only being done there? So is this the only Saturday that would be required? <clears throat> Commissioner Fry, I believe we can accommodate that easily. I just, I feel like uh, the requirements and the support of the uh, of the resident, uh, Krista Chapman, are justified in, uh, in what she'd like to see happen in her own neighborhood. So I just wanted to confirm that this would be the only Saturday uh, that uh, she, they might be uh, having to deal with this. Okay, thanks. And, and if I yes, ma'am. The, the, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, the, the only, I'm sorry, the only, you know, we, we had a tree scheduled for Saturday, which, which FCI was able to, to accommodate the, the change in a short manner as of as soon as I received that letter and read through it. I wanted to, you know, I live in the community as well. I live okay. not, as, not as close, but um, anyway, we, we made that accommodation there. Unfortunately, because of you know, the, the buses that we have that go out to, to feed our community, they need access in and out of that rear parking lot. And they, there's only one access in and out. Uh, okay, we can't, I understand. A bus can't take it around the school. Sure. Yes, ma'am. And I think on that, um, if, you know, construction projects have a tendency to, you know, not always go as planned. And I, and I think the key with this one uh, to continue doing what the school and the contractor are already doing, and that's communicating with the city and with the residents and, and trying their very best. And, and I think as long as 
as folks understand what's going on and if you let them know in advance the best that you can, I, I think, uh, in my opinion, in my experience, uh, the folks would be pretty accommodating, especially for such an important project. But yeah, I, pre I appreciate the, the accommodations that you guys have already made and vice versa for the residents. So um, does anybody have anything they'd like to ask of Mr. Banish before we move on? Okay, hearing none, um, I think we might be ready to close this to testimony and open it up to discussion for the commission. Um, is there anybody else? The only ones that I saw was the, the gentleman from the contractor and Mr. Banish. I don't think there's anybody else uh, signed up or on the call to, to add to this as witnesses or interested parties. So unless I hear something, I'm going to go ahead and close this hearing to testimony and open it up to discussion amongst the commission. So is there anybody on the commission that would like to add to anything or have anything they want to add? Uh, I feel like it's pretty straightforward and it's a temporary thing. It's about three or four months. And again, Mr. Banish made it pretty clear what the project was about. And, and I had already known a little bit about it as one of the teachers up there. So. Does anybody have any particular questions about that or anything they want to discuss? I see heads going back and forth, shaking no. So, Mr. Padilla, I can't see you as well, so I just want to check in with you and make sure you're good to go. I'm good to go. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, in that case, um, I guess we're, we're ready to enter the motion. Mayor, I move to approve CUP 20-02, a request from Aztec Municipal School District represented by Grant Banish for a conditional use permit to allow a construction yard in an 01 district at 500 East Chaco Street, Aztec, New Mexico, with the following conditions. One, that all construction activity needs to be between 7 a.m. and ending at 6.30 p.m. Two, screening needs to be added to the east and south side. And three, dust control measures need to be in place and applied for this construction project. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Carla, would you please call the roll? Mayor Snover? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Fry? Aye. Commissioner Padilla? Aye. Commissioner Randall? Aye. Commissioner Lewis? Aye. Motion passes five to zero. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Mr. Banish. Um, all right, we are at item 10, Commissioner, City Manager, and Department Head Report. Uh, Mr. Mueller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have no report. Miss, thank you, sir. Mr. Gobble. I have no report either, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Padilla. I have no report other than I went to a chamber meeting today and it was very enlightening. We have, I think we have a very active chamber trying to go it to seems work for like, us. Yeah, seems like it's kind of, there's been some new life breathed into it over the last couple months. And uh, I think uh, Mayor Pro Tem has had a little bit of hand in that with that project. And, you know, folks have rallied around and kind of getting back into the, into getting our chamber active again. So, and I know the Wayborns have been very active too. So that's, that's good news. Well, and um, my last comment would be that uh, I remember Mayor Pro Tem asking, for us to join and uh, 20 bucks, friend of, of the Chamber of Commerce and I joined today and and correct me if I'm right or that I heard Rod, then there's only eight friends of the, that and that's, there's only eight. So I think it's a good point. I agree. I, and I'm glad you brought that up because I've thought about it from time to time and I've let it get out, get away from me. So thanks for the reminder and, and I will be a new member soon. All right, um, if Mr. Padilla, are you ready for me to, are you good? I'm good. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Lewis. I have a brief report. Uh, I attended the San Juan Water Commission meeting the other day, uh, last Wednesday actually, and they uh, thought the only thing to report is that they reported on the drought, which is ongoing, that could worsen, and uh, they're keeping an eye on it. That's about it at this point. And I also have an application for the chamber, which I forgot to turn in, but I will. Thank you for your reminder. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Randall? 
No pork. Have a good dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if anybody, uh, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, just inviting everybody downtown uh, to see the four pianos that uh, you guys all voted for support, uh, financial support. They're finished. They're going to be on display. Then they're going to move to the businesses that are going to support them for a few weeks. And uh, I did attend the uh, chamber. I, I am really uh, excited about what's going on at the chamber. And you guys should be patting uh, Sandy and Mike on the back for uh, bringing this back to life. She is working really hard to uh, support businesses and, and do activities. And I, I could not have done this uh, piano project without the support of the chamber. So I, I would really appreciate everybody uh, becoming a member. 20 bucks, guys. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, there's 38 businesses that have joined. Uh, there's a membership drive going on right now. So uh, any help uh, that you can offer. Uh, also, we wrote the Connie Gotch uh, Art Foundation for money for to continue the project in the next year. Uh, we did receive a thousand dollar grant. It'll be a reimbursement grant. Uh, so we're in we're in good shape, and we already have two pianos uh, uh, donated for our next season, and a couple artists interested in painting those. So it's working. And there's supposed to be some piano players come downtown. We're going to be practicing social distancing and uh, mask wearing. And we've got um, a cleanser for hands that touch pianos. And we'll be, uh, we'll be there uh, Saturday from 10 to 8. So hope to see some, uh, some folks. Okay, that's, that's it. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. And, and yeah, that's, I, I just want to, kind of add a little kudos to all the work that she's done. Um, I don't know if you do it again or not, but I know that it's, it's been an awesome thing for the city. and It's kind of exciting to see something like that uh, really kind of get some legs under it. And with the help of various parties, the chamber, the waveborns, the mayor, pro tem, and folks that have donated and the artists, it's, it's really kind of cool what you can do. Um, when, uh, when you pull people together for a common, for a common goal. So, I don't really have much to report either. Just remember that kids are back in school virtually right now. Um, and, you know, we all fall on different sides of this whole out of school, virtual, distancing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this whole coronavirus mess that we find ourselves still wading through. But just keep in mind that, you know, when you're in Safeway or you're getting involved at Walmart, uh, some of these parents are, are pretty frazzled right now because they're figuring out how to you know, how to work and get their kids online to do lessons, especially the little ones. Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind when you snap at somebody or vice versa. You know, we're all going through we're all going through this together. And it's, some of us are having a little more trouble than others. So just a little reminder and uh, be good to your teachers. <laughs> um, so. I think a lot of us have found out that have younger kids um, since spring break, but it's, uh, it can be a challenge to say the least. But uh, I appreciate everybody. I appreciate the staff. Thank you everybody for being here tonight. And uh, I will turn it over to any department heads that would like to uh, report. All right, I don't see anybody unmuting. Uh, welcome back Chief Hill and thank you everybody. So if nobody has anything, we're going to go ahead and uh, adjourn at 6 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice night. Thank you. This conference is no longer being recorded.